I'd just love to know how you actually became interested in dancing and ballet. Um, I mean, did you have lessons from a young age? Mum took me along to classes as young as two. I was always standing in front of the television, um, prancing around to Top of the Pops or <laughs> Fame or anything back in the day that came on dance related. Yeah. And even just standing talking to people, I was constantly on the move. Um, she thought it would help me burn off some energy. And the first time I got given a prop, a little chiffon scarf, oh, and yes, told yes. to, you know, improvise and make up some moves. I was in my absolute element, <laughs> and um, my teacher suggested that I stick with it. And then I had a ballet dancer teacher when I was about uh, eight or nine, and she suggested that I perhaps go look for a vocational school, which then at 10, I um, went to Elmhurst Ballet School and spent the next six years there just discovering everything dance. Yeah. Um, my my absolute decision maker for going was I thought stage school would be like fame. Yeah. I, you know, I was a massive fan <laughs> of fame on television. I thought I'd be dancing in the canteen, in the streets, um, and the idea of that just absolutely floated my boat. But I went to the audition just thinking, what better place for me? And this is where I can dance all the time. An amazing six years there. And the very, very selfless teachers there um, said, if I really wanted to do it, that point if I really wanted to pursue a ballet career and maybe go to a school that had a company joined to it like the Royal Ballet School or Flying English National Ballet School mm. um, to finish off my training and so I did I auditioned for uh, Royal Ballet School and got a place there and um, had two years there kind of refining and um, to become a professional yeah uh, the, the love was always there uh, it was just kind of finding the path because I didn't have a, a ballet family as such or okay. a pushy ballet mom it was always a would you like to do this or are you enjoying it there was always those constant um, points where I could have exited at any point if it, it got too tough or but I always always relished it what was it particularly about ballet that you felt most attracted to um, I think I enjoyed all um, elements of dance. And for a while, I didn't think I wanted to be in musicals. I yeah. kind of, you know, it's the first kind of theatre I went to as a kid. Um, and then I went to see some ballet and my teachers started to kind of, you know, push me down that route saying, yeah. you know, you've got a talent. It always encourages you if, if people in the know kind of give you the nod at, yeah, kind of, you think we've got you what it takes. Yeah. Um, it's a great morale boost. Um, I had a bit of a Margot Fontaine moment where I went to see um, I went to see a ballet and my mum turned to me, it was Swan Lake actually, yeah. and it was an uh, English national ballet I went to see. And she said, oh, would you like to be one of the swans? And I said, no, I want to be Odessa Deal. <laughs> um, <laughs> of course. You know, in my, my very childlike voice, oh, it's also to be the big swan. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it was Agnes Oates dancing the lead then. I never really, I don't think I thought it was, it was always a dream. I never really thought it was a possibility until I was about, until I got my place at the Royal Ballet School, I think. Um, and I thought, this is where the best of the best come. Um, I'm here. Wow, yeah. this is amazing. Uh, <laughs> so that was a, a bit of a, a, a light bulb moment for me that potentially this could be a career rather yeah. than just a passion. Yeah. We were very lucky enough to have lots of the ex dancers or um, of the Royal Ballet teachers' repertoire. Leslie Collier taught me repertoire for the time I was there. Mm. Um, yeah, it's a great sense of achievement, actually, when you learn a solo in the afternoon and you work on it and you perfect it. And then as a student, you've got pre standing passes to go to the Opera House in the evening. So I'd go two, three times a week to the Opera House mm. when I was a student um, to then go in the evening to watch that solo being danced by when I was at school, Darcy Bustle or Viviana Durante yeah. or, um, you know, it starts to kind of ignite desire to be a professional ballerina. Mm. So yeah, it's a, that was very special. Why? Did you ever get to see any of the opera productions as well? Yeah, I actually, I saw, I saw a couple of opera over my, over my period there. I've got to admit, I was a bit of a bunhead. <laughs> it's always very, very, um, focused on the dance. Invariably. Although, you know, there were opportunities to go and see other things. I would, religiously go and see much like musicians would go and see the same performance with a different conductor because oh, it can quite, be a yes. very different experience for them yeah. they know notice all the musical nuances the tempo changes the um you know dramatic um you know input of the conductor i would go and see you know the same classical performance of sleeping beauty or swan lake or romeo and juliet so multiple times with different people in the lead because 
for me, uh, you know, a different person in the lead can bring different qualities to it. It was almost like seeing a completely different show. Right. Um, I was a bit of a bunhead at school and I predominantly went to see dance and uh, yeah, various different performances. Yeah. The same production often.